All right, welcome back, folks. Um, we are outside of Noxipater, uh, Mississippi, in Winston County, and this is, I think, episode five with our uh, risk uh, risk management series that we're doing our digital pasture walks. And today, I'm with Jim McAdory. He's the Winston County agent. I'm also here with Billy Lipsley, Lipsy, uh, who's actually leasing the property that we're on, and we've got Jessica Ellington, who is a, an FSA uh intern or she's doing her fsa training and so we're all together uh like i said outside of noxipator and we just we wanted to uh to come and evaluate what uh what's going on in this property um kind of get a little bit of a background uh maybe identify a few of these weeds and just try to get a an overall picture of what's what's trying to be accomplished and how we might be able to uh to kind of help um help this process along and so I'll, I'll kind of turn it over to you and, and you can kind of give us a little bit of background about what what you're doing and specifically about what we're looking at right here okay well thank you uh, this piece of property is one I ended up leasing this year and uh, the uh, landowner had uh, had some health issues and so he had not had not been uh, doing a lot of maintenance to the pasture for the last couple of years and we we uh, I knew we needed to do weed control because we've got a heavy population of weeds in here. So we did some spraying. It was a little late in the year uh, to do it, but uh, that we just had to try to make it happen when we could. So uh, the, this was a little area that the sprayer was about to run out when he came across this area. So this was bush hog in June and and. Uh, this is what it would look like right here where we're standing if it hadn't been sprayed. Okay. So can you, uh, and Bronson will show kind of down into this canopy a little bit, but we've got uh, just your, what I would consider your fairly common uh, perennial and annual grass weed competition. You've got blackberries, uh, dewberries, you've got dog fennel, horse nettle, uh, just a, your your pretty typical broadleaf assortment of, of weeds that are that are fairly dominant this time of the year. Um, but then if you look down under this canopy, you've got a, a significant amount of, of Bermuda grass and crab grass that's just trying to, to get to that get to that light. Some Brazilian vervain, um, and you can notice uh, outside where he had sprayed or where where it's not been bush hauled, you can see the how the Bermuda grass has really come on the past month or so after being sprayed. Um, and that, that really, that's that's the the main point behind weed control is simply just removing that, that weed competition, allowing our desirables to have the light and the moisture that they need uh, in order to compete. Can you uh, remind us of what, what you actually sprayed and in, in the timing and rates? Well, we did this uh, right at the end of June, the first week of July. Uh, we were using the uh, gray zone next with the surfactant, I think about a quart per acre, and uh, that was you know, that was after I, I had gone in and bush hogged it just a week or so before because we knew the weeds were too tall, it was going to drag the drag the nozzles on the sprayer, so we knew it wasn't going to get decent coverage. So I just ran in here and bush hogged it. Right so you used a boom boom sprayer or yes. boomless? Yeah, yeah boom, sprayer. boom sprayer. Yes. Okay. Um, as far as timing, uh, obviously we would love to love to get that done a little bit earlier in the year, you know, May or June. Right. Um, and especially doing it earlier in that in that time of year allows allows our Bermuda grass and allows our desirables to have more of a of a growing season. But because we can we can continue growing. Uh, into February some years um, I guess it's better late than never can you tell us a little bit about you you, you mentioned some of your grazing management a while ago you've got several uh, fields that you're hoping to rotationally graze tell us a little bit about your cows and what you're what you're intent on with them well this 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 is a group of heifers that uh, I had somewhere else to move from over here uh, and I've got some other sections pasture that they'll be able to rotate into uh, once they've once they've grazed this this area down so that's that's something I'd like to I, I like doing you know because it, you get better use out of your grass that way. Yeah. 
switch around and rotate. It's that yeah. simple. It's that simple. So just, you know, uh, what are your, in terms of rotational grazing, you know, you, you, you said more grass, you get more out of it that way. I mean, what what is it about rotational grazing that allows you to get more grass? Well, when you do it, just like when you have dry weather, you can, if you've got dry weather and you're able to keep moving them around, if they don't, just get it down to where it's like a short carpet, it comes back a lot quicker, even in dry weather. Exactly right. Uh, so preventing overgrazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's just... It just make it just makes sense. I've seen it work. I went through the through the drought uh, back in '99, 2000. Uh, I had another place that I had substantial acreage on, and I never had to start feeding hay. I was one week away from having to feed hay when it finally started raining. Yep. You know, uh, and that that convinced me, you know, it's working. Yep. And Jim, you, you mentioned something a while ago before we started filming uh, as far as soil fertility. Um, and that's I know that's one, one thing that you have been kind of harping on with a lot of your producers in, in the county. Um, but in terms of, you know, I would consider this field a start from scratch. You know, you can, you can see the vegetation that we had here. You can see what it looks like when we remove it. But in terms of soil fertility, um, you know, usually taking basic soil tests uh, and I think what we talked about a while ago is liming is usually our, our number one recommended practice um, how, how many of your folks are liming and, and do you do you actually see any results from liming yes we do I, I get a lot of flack from folks saying I got stock in a lime pit somewhere because I'm recommending lime so so often here in Winston County we, we're gonna pull samples on this place this week and get it back and I guarantee you it's gonna be somewhere in the low five to mid five range, mm -hmm. and we're just you're just not going to get the produ produ productivity out of this pasture until we get that pH up. So we're going to work on that and our P and K levels too. A lot of folks in our county overlook the uh, the K levels, and you know every ton of forage you're taking off there, you're losing about 60 pounds or so of potassium, and uh, which I think I've heard about the Russians say that's like a vitamin shot for your grass. So yeah, paying attention to your soil fertility and pH. That's just a paramount thing you need to do. It, of course, you're grazing heights and rotating your cattle and that sort of thing. But uh, the ABCs, one, two, threes of uh, pasture management, the fundamentals, that's really where it's at. Yep. Any other comments? Any thoughts? Jessica, you got anything? Any yeah. questions? You good? Okay. All right. Well, that'll do it for this episode. Appreciate it.